And there's over 100 million birds have been depopulated the last three or four months. My counterparts in other parts of the U.S. have done nothing but chase chickens and kill chickens and swap chickens, you know, bury chickens and vaccinate chickens for the last six months, and they're totally exhausted. How that impacts Texas beyond the fact that we're worried that we could get this in our state um, if one of the migratory birds move back to the south, uh, because we think geese started this, is that all of our federal counterparts have, are not here in Texas right now. They're up in the Midwest fighting AI, and so the partnership, the animal health infrastructure of state and federal folks that together help y'all with things every day, we're cut in half. So we have half as many people as we've had, and we're simultaneously TV, simultaneously TV testing in Amarillo area, actually Dimmitt and Herford's Canyon, that's where it's at, and then uh, in Brownsville. So that's the large geographic, you know, I had 17 people in Amarillo yesterday, and we've got 35 in Brownsville. And so I don't, I'm not that big of an agency, so you can see how this is putting stress on us, and I just want you all to know we're doing our best. And again, thanks to ICA. Bill, did you come back?
codified or formalized finally if you're in the deer business and you want to take brain samples so you can move your deer interstate for chronic waste disease uh, we pass rules that tells you how to do that so that you can certify that your herd does not have chronic waste disease and that was an important deal there's about 1300 people raise white-tailed deer in Texas and there's a lot of money as y'all know these deer are very expensive and so that was a good thing for the industry and we're going to let non-veterinarians do that they basically take a little training from us we put them in a database and we keep up with it I mentioned feral swine and one other thing that we've done is the commission changed the length of a health certificate for horses uh, uh, horses from 45 to 30 days so if you're a barrel racer or somebody like that, this is a big deal to you because your health certificate's only going to be good for 30 days. We were the only state that had a 45-day health certificate for horses, and no one knows why. I, my best guess is that 50 years ago, someone said, well, if we make it 45 days, I can go to Fort Worth, San Antonio, and Houston all on the same health certificate. Well, that's really not the right reason to do that because that's where diseases occur. And we've had a number of horse diseases in the last couple of years, viral diseases have an incubation period of two or three days. Equine herpes virus, specifically stomatitis too. And beyond that, we found out we're in violation of the federal rules that we're not supposed to have a 45 day health certificate for horses, it's supposed to be 30. So the commission changed it to 30. If you're in that business, be aware of the fact that effective next month sometime you're going to need a 30 day health certificate, not a 45. And then I mentioned already the proposed rules, which were.